Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, and Stacy has a question. I do, I do. What is your question, Stacy? My question is, um, in Jubilee, it tells us that if we, if I'm not mistaken, if we um, look at the sun or the moon or the celestials, that it will cause us to worship them. And I'm saying, well, how can you actually observe the celestials to, you know, tell the times of the seasons if you don't look at them? You, so, um, is it wrong or is it not wrong? You said Jubilees. What? I believe it's Jubilees. The Book of Jubilees? Right. Hmm. Because it actually says it in the book of Deuteronomy. Okay. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, should it be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God has divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Okay, so. No. So that sounds like what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Where you're actually being driven to worship the sun. Right. It tells us here, it says that you're going to lift up your eyes unto heaven. And when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, everything up there, mm -hmm. should it be driven to worship them. Mm -hmm. So to understand this, we have to put it into context. Right. So let's come back to verse 14. Okay. Which says, and the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might do them in the land, whether ye go over to possess them. Mm -hmm. So that's talking about the covenant right. or the commandments that was given at Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Let's go over and take a look at those. Of course, the covenant starts in Exodus chapter 20 and it goes through chapter 21, 22 and ends in chapter 23. But when you look down at verse four, it says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Mm -hmm. So that's the commandment not to make any images, not right. to take any pictures of anything organic. Now, mm -hmm. you, from what I understand, you could take a picture of this computer or you could take a picture of a bridge or a truck. But it's saying you make no image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or the water under the earth. Anything the father created. Anything he created. And there will be those who will err on the side of caution and they're not going to take a picture of anything. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't dare tell them to change that. That's, that's actually a good thing. But the way I understand it, you're not going to get in trouble if you take a picture of your shoes. However, you will get in trouble if you take a picture of your feet. Right. Now, coming back to Deuteronomy chapter four and verse 15 says, take ye therefore good heed unto yourself, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. So it's definitely pointing back to the covenant because that's the time when our father spoke to us. Right. That's the only time that two million people heard his voice mm -hmm. in an audible tone mm -hmm. at one time. Mm hmm. That was at the base of Mount Horeb. Right. Then it says, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of any male or female. So he's saying, if you don't pay attention and take heed to that and you go ahead and make yourself an image. If you take a picture, notice he says likeness of any male or female. Mm -hmm. So if you make the likeness of anything, whether it be. A picture, whether it be an idol, a statue, a graven image, anything. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. The likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air. That's in verse 17. And you kind of see where we're getting the idea from that he's talking about any living things. Mm -hmm. Right? Because he's talking about, you know, things that he created. Mm -hmm. He goes on to say the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't want us taking any picture of anything he created. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to understand when you take a picture of something that he created, you are admiring the creation and leaving out the creator. I mean, it's like when your kids or somebody asks you for a picture of them or somebody asks you for a picture. They don't really want you else. They would come and see you or they would request that you come and see them. Mm -hmm. They're substituting your presence with that picture. Mm -hmm. So that's all they're going to do when they want to think about you. 
They're not going to pick up a phone and call you. They're going to open up that picture and they're going to sit there and they're going to gaze at you as if it's you that they are looking at. Right. Well, we're doing the same thing when we take a picture of that tree. We're not admiring our father and his creation saying, oh, what a wonderful tree. We're looking at this picture that was created by a man going, oh, this is a wonderful picture of a tree. Mm -hmm. So we're worshiping the creation and not worshiping the creator. But then you notice right here, it says, and lest thou lift up thy eyes unto heaven. And when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars and all the host of heaven, should it be driven to worship them and serve them which the Lord thy God has divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. So if you do take a picture, mm -hmm. if you take, and he don't say, he's not saying if you look at the sun, he said, if you take a picture of the sun, mm -hmm. you're going to be driven to worship it. And that should be noticed the word right. driven there. He ain't saying you're going to do it on your own. He ain't, he's not saying you're going to make the choice to do so. You know, he's saying you're going to be forced to do it. It's like you're going to put a hook in your jaws and he's going to drive you in order to worship the sun and the moon. And, you know, here in today's time, people don't understand how it is that we worship the sun and the moon. Mm -hmm. We do so through their pagan gods. Mm -hmm. The pagan holidays mm -hmm. are the worship of the sun and the moon. Mm -hmm. uh, Christmas is the worship of the sun and Easter is the worship of the moon. Mm, okay. And so what he's saying is if you break that commandment, if you break that second commandment and take a picture of anything, that's what you're going to end up doing. So where is it saying that if you take a picture of the sun or the moon, you're going to be driven to worship the sun and the moon? Is that the same as if you take a picture of a human, you're going to be driven to worship a human. No, he does. He's not he specifying. He's he's he spelled it out to say if you take a picture of anything organic. So if you take a picture of a human, mm -hmm. you're going to be driven to worship the sun. OK. OK. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes sense when you look over here back at the Ten Commandments. Verse five says, thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the inequity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So what he's saying here, he's making a connection between taking an image of these things and actually hating him. Mm -hmm. And then you see right there in verse six, he says, and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So. There's a connection here between loving him and keeping his commandments right. and breaking this particular commandment. Mm -hmm. It's like the breaking of this commandment severs the relationship between you and him. And then since you don't have a relationship between him anymore, the true son, then you're going to end up worshiping the sun in the sky mm -hmm. and worshiping the moon. And you do that by um, celebrating holidays and things like that. So yeah, the pagan holidays are the worship of the sun and the moon. He, he doesn't have a problem with you looking at the sun. That's one of his best creations. He doesn't have a problem with you looking at the moon, but he does have a problem with you worshiping them. And we worship them through the pagan holidays. That's what they're doing. They all of their pagan holidays are set up for moon and or sun God worship. Mm -hmm. That's what our religions are doing. They're partaking in sun god worship. That's why when you go in your kitchen, there's pictures of the sun all over the food you bought from the store. Humanity is now worshiping the sun as the creator of life and forsaking our father who actually created the sun. Right. That is correct. Question answered. Let me answer one more question. And to go a little bit further, as he's talking about these images that people have created, this is one of the things that the 144,000 and even maybe that multitude that no man can number will do after we make this transition over into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. One of the first things they're going to do is destroy all of these images and pictures that people have made. Knock they're, them down. They're going to knock them down. That's what the scripture talks about when it says every image and every idol shall fall. Well, those that are not destroyed by the apocalypse and the earthquake and all of the other events, there are people who are sitting here waiting now, ready to go out there and destroy them. You know? All those statues yeah. of, quote, great men and women. Yeah, they've got to come down. Yeah, there's one down the street at the graveyard that I'm waiting to blow his head off. Mm -hmm. as, soon as, as soon as I get the call, that 30-06 bullet is going straight <laughs> to sever that thing off of his head. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not good to have these pictures at all. But the one thing we definitely don't want to be doing is making these pictures, creating these pictures, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a difference between, you know, having a picture in your possession and actually making that picture. I mean, some of us have pictures of presidents, but we didn't actually take that picture. You know, I understand that these pictures do something to us on a spiritual level, but that's not really what's talked about here is talking about actually making the picture. And that's what we'd actually don't want to do. We don't want to turn our cameras toward anything he created and snap a picture of it, just like we don't want to make an idol out of it, mm -hmm. you know, out of stones or wood. Right. So is that it? That was my question. All right. Well, I guess we'll let you have the closing thought. Uh, well, I think one of the things that I didn't understand was that um, how were we worshiping the sun and moon? Um, because, you know, I'm not out there saying, oh, I praise you, sun, and I praise you, moon. But when you said that about um, celebrating the holidays, it made perfect sense. So that was one of the things that I got. Plus, plus, knowing that we're definitely not supposed to be taking those pictures, mm -hmm. creating those images, rather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people will stand up and say, hey, I don't worship the sun or I don't worship the moon. But yet they're going to be down there at the christmas party or eating the easter ham so mm -hmm. all right guys if you got anything out of this video go ahead and hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button but leave us a comment either way and shalom, shalom.